You're listening to dialectradio.co.uk. And we're joined now by Simon Farris and Bridget White from Bristol Underground Church. Hi, Simon and Bridget. Welcome Hello. to Dialect. Hi, Tony. Now, you were on a few years ago, weren't you? I seem to remember doing a, your own little sort of uh, witch report on Bristol's churches, which was quite uh, entertaining. Just take us back there for a minute, because, I mean, in the Christian world, you're, you've got a lot to choose from, haven't you? I suppose it started uh. off with the celtic church possibly Mm -hmm. and the early christian church then there was the catholic church on top of that came the protestant church Uh, then there's been a more sort of evangelical churches ever since give us an idea of the spread of churches that there are in the city in bristol well we found that the best ones i think bridget would agree we like the best were the really lively black ones like the redeemed christian church of god in stokes croft potter's house and um, quite a few times people and in response to this good church guide tony which a few people have contacted me on email and said oh which church do you recommend because that's on the website and i I point them to this redeemed christian church of god in stokes croft because it's really they're really happy aren't they and lively and um, it's good good music that was our favorite those were our favorites but what about the message coming across mm. from the uh, from the pastors? Because that makes a big difference, doesn't it? I can remember sitting mm. in a service for, with uh, a, an American pastor based in Bristol, uh, yeah. and it was actually uh, uh, I would I would say verging on the Islamophobic. It didn't really come across to me mm. as something which was uh, the sort of the love of Christ kind of thing. I mean, I don't know how you want to describe that, but anyway, think, what, what are your thoughts about about some some of the churches? I mean, because you, you could be happy yeah. and clappy, but yeah. you could be thinking the wrong thing, can't you? I think the church we thought was the best, which we've been to quite a few times, is the Trinity Tabernacle with Andy Padgett. I actually thought he's the best pastor. What, what is a tabernacle? Well, the tabernacle is the old place where where the Jewish um, mercy seat and the everything was held, wasn't it? That they travelled around um, the desert with, for forty years with. It just means a bit uh, a building, a, tent. a habitation. It means a tent. A tent yeah. <laughs> okay, so it was a kind of portable church. It was. Yeah. Uh, all right. So whereabouts is that then? It's in Hassel Drive, just off Lawrence Hill roundabout. Okay, well, because it is, it, I mean, I, I remember um, chatting to a homeless person once who said to me, did you know Bristol's got more churches per square mile than any city I in the country? I heard that when I first moved here 18 years ago, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know in if that's world, true. I, any, any, I mean, we'd like to think so, maybe, but yeah. I'm not sure. A lot of them seem to be derelict, don't they? What about that one on St. Michael's Hill? I was walking yeah. past that the other day, um, and it was used to be part of the city walls, I believe. Yeah. There, and it's just been the, the Church of England seems to have just left it derelict for years I, know. I mean as you as we all know that the church in, in general is breaking out into s- smaller buildings their own buildings meeting in schools etc isn't it so it's moved away from the liturgy and the sitting in the pews to a, to a more interactive um, everyone included type of church well it's worth saying as well the church is not a building the church no. is the people no. uh, so uh, if the church of england decides it wants to close a building and let it fall to bits then uh, that doesn't mean to say the church isn't alive and well no, actually. exactly uh, anyway uh, Br- bridget uh, i know you've yes. been uh, scribbling away uh, yes, haven't have. you and you've yes. also after your scribblings you went to talk to a publisher yes we met um Chris Wright at a meeting some years, well, a year or two ago, and he's seen one of my poems, um, Love From On High, and he said, have you got any more of those? And I said, about a hundred or so. So he said, well, I'm a book um, editor, and I'd like to see them because I'd like to help you publish them. So here it is, Hands Across the Ocean, which is a book of poems plus some personal writings from my childhood in Ireland. So is that uh, your hand or God's hand there? That's I can see on the front of the front My brother-in-law, cover. Colin Lang, he's okay. a social worker. He does quite a lot of this type of art. So I asked him if he would do two hands across the ocean with the cross so and the ocean. mine and Bridget's hands. Yeah, like the different groups of people oh, right. different so the idea being you're you're on Ireland. the west Ireland. side of the irish sea yes yeah and simon's on the east side of the irish sea and yes. your hands are actually your arms are so long <laughs> 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 that yes. you're touching well we've got the cross in the middle which is the irish ocean yeah so it's britain and the irish sea yeah irish yeah. who's been enemies in the past but now we're all friends 
for the well, sake we of hope God. So. Uh, We've yes. been working together for 14 years since yes. you used to come into our um, homeless drop-in, I remember, the Shepherd's Tent about 12 years ago, and that's where we started, and we've been yes. working together ever since. Yeah, I remember doing a remember crossing, a crossing mm-hmm. of the Irish Sea, actually, on a ferry. Yes. And um, I remember uh-huh. when they announced that they were leaving the port, I think it was... Uh, Fishguard or somewhere, uh, Pembrokeshire, mm. uh, they said, well, it might be a bit of a rough crossing because the captain, it was a bit touch and go as to whether we were going to set off today. Yes. They announced it on the tannoy, and my God, I, I'm not allowed to say that. Yes. It was very, very rough. It's, a, it's the roughest <laughs> sea you can go in, apparently. Is it? Yes. Oh, the most treacherous uh, in the world. Well, I mean, it's, the, one thing I'd say is if you're crossing the Irish Sea and it starts getting a bit rough, don't yes. stay below decks because you get all disorientated. Absolutely. It can make you feel a bit ill. Yes. Best thing to do is to mm. get your raincoat on cling to the rails on the side and pray <laughs> pray Thank probably God I don't yes. get seasick but then you, you we were we were um, I was stood on the side of this of this uh, uh, car ferry and you look below and it was like a crater it op- is. opening up underneath and the and yes. the ship just kind of yeah. making these terrible creaking sounds it is quite frightening it was yes. like all the the plates on the side of the ship were sort of gr- gr- snapping yes. or something but it, yeah. they weren't because we managed to get across anyway quite an exciting it is. trip if you've never done it better than flying yes. much much you feel like you're really doing it anyway so uh you're going to read a little bit of one of your poems yes now, um, um i've got Bridget. a a hundred poems or so in this book. And, and you've chosen Bounty Hunter to read a little bit out of that. It's the Bounty Hunter. I had sort of a vision of what it would be like to have somebody chasing after you, because I did have once, and it was a terrible feeling of having to keep a step ahead of someone that was going to harm me. So it's based on that type of thing. Who is the Bounty Hunter that follows me country to country got off with me at every station, stayed with all my relations. Was it by the price on my head that he was greedily led? If I didn't commit the crime, out of me he wouldn't make a dime. But I have done the deed that will finally meet his need. I have to say it's all my trash that will finally make him some cash. But first I have to be his catch. So I was on the ball when I received his call. Okay, lovely. Uh, and also, what what about this? You, you, you've actually recorded some music as well as part of your. Um, is this as part of your Bristol Underground Church, or yeah. is this no, separate? I'll, or I'll what? tell you about that. Have yes. you heard of Graham Kendrick? Famous Shine Jesus Shine and all those. <laughs> He's the most famous um, Christian musician of the last twenty, thirty years. And what more than Cliff Richard? Well, the one that's done all the worship songs for for churches and stuff. And uh, we were looking for a composer for, for Bridget's poems. I tried for a few years, got nowhere. And so I just typed into Facebook, friends, I typed Graham Kendrick. And this other, this other Graham Kendrick from Bournemouth <laughs> um, answered. And he said, I suppose you're looking for the famous one. Sorry, um, I'm a composer, but you obviously don't want me. And I said, oh, well, well perhaps you could help. And this man from Bournemouth has produced so far... Six absolutely brilliant songs from from Bridget's. Um, but we'll make our own mind up about that. When, well, when that's my that. mind. Which one are we going to hear now? Bridget's chosen. I've got my visa. I've got my visa. I'm going to enter in. Heaven is my home, and I'm not alone. He paid the price. Talking about Jesus Christ. He'll take my sins from me And he'll set me free I've got my visa I'm gonna enter in He holds the key Oh, can't you see? I have repented And he has relented He's my judge and jury And his love will cure me He holds my sorrow, all my tomorrows I've got my visa, I'm gonna enter in I've got my visa, I'm gonna enter in Heaven is my home, and I'm not alone He paid the price, talking about Jesus Christ Take my sins from me 
and he'll set me free. I've got my visa, I'm gonna enter in. And on the cross, his life he lost. He gave his love, he came down from above. And I've been forgiven, now I am living. I've been healed, the truth is revealed. I've got my visa, I want to enter in. I've got my visa, I'm going to enter in. Heaven is my home, and I'm not alone. He paid the price, talking about Jesus Christ. He'll take my sins from me, he'll set me free. I've got my visa, I'm going to enter in His love for me, he set me free I've been baptized, to a new life I'll arise His truth rolls on, in word and in song Customs control, I gotta declare my soul I've got my visa, I'm going to enter in have you got your visa? Have you got your visa? Let me hear you say yeah. Have you got your visa? Oh, you got your visa. Going to enter in. You're going to enter in. We're going to enter in now, brothers and sisters. Going to enter in. That was I've Got My Visa by Graham Kendrick, was it, Simon? Yeah. Written by me, but Bridget written, White. Written by Bridget, yes, wow, from Bristol's poems. Underground Church. Uh, yes. Now, that album, if people are interested, can you get hold of it, that CD? Well, contact me on Bristol Underground Church at yahoo.co.uk and we'll send you a copy, yeah. Or Amazon, where you can buy Hands Across... The ocean, the ocean the and yeah. also well, that's the, hang on that's the poetry book though yeah what about the what about the cd yeah the cd contact yes. me on email do you have a yeah but not everyone has email simon so have you got a phone number phone number oh seven nine eight four seven two seven oh five one now you do quite a lot of the street evangelism yeah. tell us how you got into that well that's a good story i don't know how long we've got but um basically i i, I prayed to jesus one time i was I was evangelising on the side, but I was looking for a, my, what my career would be because I got a degree from Cambridge. And uh, I suddenly said to Jesus as I was um, driving along one day, I said, all right, I'll do it full time. And I got peace from heaven in my heart. And I knew he was saying, yes, that's what I want you to do. And I've been doing it ever since. And that was But what does it actually mean, though? What are you doing day to day? day, to day yeah. um, well, he said, do it with tracts or without. And basically, I give out thousands of leaflets it's a lot easier than talking to everyone as they go by but when you say jesus said this to me i mean mm. how does he say it to you i mean well, as i said i got peace from heaven in my heart and i knew i knew he was saying yeah that's what he, he speaks by the holy spirit tell us what what is the holy spirit holy spirit's the third person of the trinity father son and holy spirit and and how does it actually does it you can you hear a voice in your ear occasionally people have but no i haven't it, it's uh he speaks spirit to spirit in your inside in your heart so it's sort of almost moving you in a particular direction to almost like pricking your conscience or something like it that it can work you're... that way yes it can it can actually be words but yes it certainly can be a movement i as think well. if you're hearing voices in your head that no, might not necessarily be jesus no that, might no, no that wasn't a voice that that was more like what you would say a moving and a knowing and an understanding it was as i said spirit to spirit and that was that was silent as i said i got a, a peace from heaven what do you make of all this Holy Spirit stuff, Bridget? Well, it's a guidance which, if you listen to the small, still voice within you, guide mm. you, you know, go this way. Um, did you remember to lock the car tonight? It could get stolen. You got the next But, I mean, that's gone. surely that's your <laughs> own mind saying that, no, isn't it? No, it, it's definitely a guidance uh, from heaven. Can and be, yeah. you get led to help certain people 
like you might be out in the street and suddenly you're, you're told to go and help that person and so it's a guidance well, it sounds like almost an instruction it's like your, yes. your boss god is your boss yes, yes. go yes. this way boss. go that way that's right yeah. and how how do you tune into that but for people who who think this is a bit crazy how do you tune into that read the bible yeah. get to know god's word and be in tune with heaven. Just just tune in like you do to a good radio like this one. <laughs> tune I, in. I was, You're buttering me up. <laughs> yes. what, what, I've, what I've learned, if people are interested, is because um, I've been a Christian 25 years, I started off reading the Bible and obeying that. Um, because like when you're a babe, say you're you know in the flesh, you, you need your, your parents around to tell you what to do. And when I graduated a bit more in Christ, I felt that he was saying... Don't depart from the Bible, but listen to the Spirit. Now, he gave me a word. The Word and the Spirit say Amen, so they agree. Mm -hmm. But So when you grow up as a child, you, 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 you gradually start to think for yourself, say, and, and, not, and not remember everything, your pet, not do everything just because your parents said something. So for a young Christian, get into that Bible, as Bridget said, mm -hmm. and as you grow... You will. God will speak to you directly, not to contra contravene the Bible, but you you will grow in your personal relationship and learn to receive directly as well. Yeah, you're nodding away there, Bridget. But I mean, we've had also mm. on this program Gail yes. Ripplinger. Um, she's an American. She wrote a book called the New Age Bible Version. So the actual version of the Bible you use is quite important. She's yes. pointed out that the New International Version of the Bible, which is a copywriter, which is still owned by Rupert Murdoch and his. Uh, yeah media empire i imagine it's harper collins the publishing arm of the murdoch empire yeah. uh, quite a lot is actually missing from that things like oh, yeah. fasting things like yeah. Prayer, yeah. actually the words uh, the name of god the name of jesus things like that are kind of missing in some cases in time verses missing from which yeah. so it's quite important you have the right version we, of the go Bible. For, we go for the king james yes yeah what what i say is the king the king james for accuracy yes. and other supplement other translations for understanding because quite often the king james is a bit archaic and as long as you don't depart from from the king james mm -hmm. the others can add understanding where where, it can, where the other is difficult yeah because it's very important to get the fast and prayer like you just said tony in because yeah. half is just prayer the other half is fast and prayer jesus said mm. Some things will only come leave. out by fast and prayer. Yeah, so yeah. it's very important. That's why they've taken out the. Why is that so important? And Murdoch's taken this out of the Bible. It, what? What? Why are prayer and fasting it's important? It's because it leaves things less effective in the Bible if you don't have the whole truth. Because if Jesus said fast and prayer, he meant fast and prayer so that certain things would leave people and they'd be healed and perhaps delivered from demonic well things. jesus said it doesn't come out just by prayer it yes. needs fasting as well yeah, yeah it's such a it's a shame that's happened christianity isn't the only religion in the city i mean we probably have all sorts of other slightly spooky ones which we may not go there right now but what about the islam because i i spoke to some muslims that say when jesus comes back they agree with christians mm. saying that when jesus comes back he's going to come back as a muslim well i think well why is he called jesus christ because jesus christian not jesus muslim <laughs> He's also a Jew and not any other religion. He wasn't a Catholic or a Protestant or a, a whatever else, a Muslim. He was a, mm. he was a Jew and he'll remain that, come back as that. Okay, well, lovely to talk to you both. Uh, just remind us, because I know you do prayer meetings in your own flat, don't you, Simon? Yeah. How can people uh, hook up with you? Rather than, we've had email and things like that, what about face-to-face? Uh, -face? You've had my phone number. Yeah, well, as I say, my phone number, and it's um, Wednesdays, 7.30. And they're really good meetings, by the way. It's more than prayer. It's, um, it's fellowship and Bible study and everything. It's okay. free. It's and, absolutely freedom. And uh, just to remind, the uh, email address is Bristol Underground Church at yahoo.co.uk. Simon's number 07984727051. Simon and Bridget, thanks very much for thanks, joining us. Tony. Yeah, thanks, Thank Tony. You. God bless. Bristol Community FM, 93.2. Your voice, your choice.